Okay, there we go. Hi, so, how you doing? It's Tez. I decided to compile all my tips videos into one place because it's probably quite confusing when I have videos called six tips for new players and another one called six tips and one called eight tips. So this is basically going to be all the tips you'll ever need if you're a new player playing Cyberpunk and I won't be making any more tips videos after this. I thought of a few new things. There's a couple of ones in my previous videos I'm not that happy with. I need to address and fix. I'm just going to quickly blitz through them all now and um, yeah. Leave it there for you. You don't need to bother with the other ones. Just watch this one instead. Yeah, let's get on with it. Okay, the first one is great. It's uh, everybody probably knows about it at this stage. It's the apartment buffs. If you want to get more XP quicker, sleeping regenerates your health and you get the rested buff for one hour, which increases your skill gain, your XP gain by 20%. Additionally, if you have one of the newer apartments where you can brew coffee, that will give you the energized status, which increases your maximum stamina by 25% and increases your stamina regen by 30%. Pretty good. Who wants coffee? Showering is another good thing you can do. Uh, it gives you a one hour buff called Refreshed and Refreshed gives you a health regen during combat which will regen your health up to 60% of the maximum threshold. If you have the regeneration perk, this increases the in combat health regen by 20% and your health regen threshold by 20%. That's all pretty good. These are good things to have. Okay, the next one is headshot finishers or basically the difference between a downed enemy and a killed enemy. And this game does push you towards uh, not killing. So once you've downed an enemy, you'll have done one of two things. You'll have either incapacitated stated them or you will have um, outright killed them if you're using swords things like katanas uh, chances are you might have outright killed them if a bit of their body went flying in a different direction then chances are they're all dead and you're fine you can move on if not and you're looking for some bonus xp if you move the cursor over their head you'll see the dot will either be blue or it'll be red if it's red it means they're incapacitated and they can still be finished off so if you just give them a little shot to the head um, they will be killed and you'll then get the XP. If you're leveling up your swords, you'll incapacitate them with the sword and then when you finish them off with a pistol, if you don't like chopping people's heads off, which it's pretty gross, um, you'll still get the XP for the sword because that's what you incapacitated them with. Now that leads me on to one of my new ones that I want to insert here today. And it's actually based on a comment, a very useful comment. Somebody misinterpreted that previous one as me telling people to go around killing cyber psychos. A tip for new players, don't kill cyber psychos. Um, not until you've called Regina Jones. She wants you to send them to her alive. And because of the way the game is built, if you kill them beforehand, and then text her, you won't get that bonus. There's a weapon you get at the end, only comes if you leave them all, except one, there's one that you cannot protect if you leave them all alive. Now here's the deal, you can still get that extra killing XP from them by finishing the mission, incapacitating them, using non-lethal means, and then calling Regina Jones, and then you can kill them after that. She doesn't know, because that's just game mechanics, you've completed the quest. It's a little immersion breaking, it's up to you whether you do it or not. You know, in your head you know they're not alive, but uh, uh, look, it doesn't really make a difference, it's just a game. Right, moving on anyway. Recharge when you get them. If you do an NCPD hustle and you pick up a shard, read that shard. Um, oftentimes, um, I don't know what the percentage is, but quite a few of them will lead you to further parts of the quest, either a hidden stash or, um, yeah, it's usually just like a hidden stash. So yeah, do that. And also they've got lots of interesting information. A lot of them have overlap. Some gigs reference people from other jobs and jobs reference people from gigs. And you get this whole tapestry of this whole ecosystem that is the different areas of Night City and what people are doing, like Jotaro in Kabuki. His tendrils spread far and wide and his influence leads to other things as well. Uh, loot everything and read the descriptions of the items you loot. It's totally worth it. And it's, it's actually, some of them are quite amusing and well thought out and it's a little novelty. But everything can be sold or deconstructed, so it's worthwhile looting everything you see. And you never know when you're picking up a quest shard or skill shard or perk shard. So yeah, if you see those little loot boxes, loot them. You never know what you're gonna find. A really useful little tip, the mini map in the top right. You've probably worked this out, but it's possible you might not have, so I thought I'd let you know. When you down an enemy, you'll be able to find out where they are on the mini map in the top right. If they have something to loot, they'll have an X. The color of that X denotes the quality of the loot. If they're an orange X, then they've got something orange to loot. Legendary, if they've got purple, it's epic. If they've got blue, it's rare. If it's green, it's uncommon. And if it's a white X, it's common. It helps you find out where they are, and it also tells you what they have. Once you've looted them and they've nothing else to loot, the X will go. So it's really kind of good for people who really want to get everything. Okay, exploring is good, both vertically and uh, around the place. To take some time to explore the city. You can discover loads of stuff. There are still a few missable quests that if you don't explore and you don't take the time to listen and mosey on about you the place what? that you can potentially How miss. 
don't ignore cyberware and perks. Now, it's very easy to slip into this game and treat it like a bit of a looter shooter. Go out and upgrade your gear based on what you find. If it's a green arrow, switch to it and just keep playing that way and play it like an FPS, I suppose, but don't play it that way. And especially on harder difficulties, you'll actually find that extremely challenging to a point of frustration because you're supposed to be using your perks and you're supposed to be using cyberware to enhance and upgrade your character. And it's the RPG element that is there. There's some really killer skills at the top of the perk tree. Some of them are pretty broken, like Jeepers Creepers and stuff like that, but uh, broken in a good way, of course. But, you know, so don't ignore cyberware and perks because they really bring your character to life. Oh, here's another neat tip, right, for looting some things, right? There are things like drones and some of the robots and even some of the people. Sometimes they have a loot box on them, the little loot icon, but you can't loot it. That is a bit of, I don't know, some kind of clipping bug or something that you can't get to it. Um, with people, you can pick them up and drop them and a little baggie is left in their place, like a little, uh, I don't know, delivery bag of goodies. So you can pick that up. You can't do that with drones. I don't think you do it with the robots either. I guess they're too heavy, right? Here's the deal. Walk away from them far enough so that they despawn, then go back to them and the little baggies will be there and you can get it. Usually on drones, unless you have the perk that gives you potentially weapons and mods, it's usually just components, but you know, it's still worthwhile getting. So get a bit of a distance away from them, come back and a little baggie will be left. Learn to ignore the bugs. Learn to laugh at the bugs, but don't expect a bug-free experience. This isn't Call of Duty. This is a, a sprawling, massive city with so much interaction and stuff that it's just, it's the more you play, the more you see, you might get through a whole playthrough without seeing any bugs. So, um, but either way, when you see them, ignore them. If they're game breaking, which is very rare, I've not had any game breaking ones since 1.5, but if you did come across one, that leads me on to the next tip, which is to save frequently. Now, not only does saving frequently let you, you know, not lose a lot of gameplay if there is a bug and, you know, you're not going to lose a lot of time if something goes wrong. Another benefit to saving is it lets you experiment. So you might choose a dialogue choice or you might choose an action in a game that isn't the way you wanted it to be or you want to see what it's like the other way. You can retry other things. So, you know, because not everybody can do multiple playthroughs. They might only have the one, but they want to see the deviations when they're playing it through and then choose. Like, they might go, okay, I'm going to say yes to this character and then play that a little bit. Go, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to go back and say no to that character. You know, you know, the things we can't do in real life that we like to do in games. Allow yourself uh, one spoiler if you don't know anything about the game. Uh, look into the romanceable characters and decide which one you want to romance because that is completely impacted by your starting character, as in whether it's a masculine or a feminine V, which one you can romance. So if that matters to you, look at that beforehand because you don't want to be 40 hours into the game and realize this road I thought I was going down was actually uh, not possible. I am barking up the wrong tree, you might say. Don't skip the blue dialogue options. They're definitely worthwhile doing, unless it's something you don't want to say to the person and you're RPing it, but they usually open up different paths of conversation and they expand the story and they're really well acted. So yeah, definitely don't skip them. Um, don't rush through it, you know? Don't rush into your attribute points. Only fools rush in and I was a fool in my first game. For example, if I would come across a locked door and I only had four out of five tech skill and I needed five, I would instantly put the point in tech skill and then I would open that door, find a bit of loot, instant buyer's remorse. I should have held on to that attribute point. The same in conversation trees. You might find you're having a conversation with a character and there's an option there that's grayed out unless you have a certain skill in that area. And again, I would pump the attribute point into that attribute and straight away realize it was just a nice thing to be able to say. There may have been some kind of calculations being going on in the background that, well, because I chose that option, things will happen different down the line. But it's very hard to justify that kind of expenditure. And the reason is, when you're indiscriminately spending your attribute points to open a door that might just be hiding some loot or give you an alternate route or talk to someone, you're actually mortgaging your future when it comes to when the game gets harder or when you want to say max out a skill tree. If you've got points everywhere, you might find you can't max out the skill tree you want to max out and you'll miss out on some of the best perks that skill tree has to offer. It's not such a big deal in your first playthrough, but in your second playthrough, bear it in mind in a big way because your second playthrough and maybe even your first playthrough, it's really fun to experiment with the different areas. So wait and see what you want to spend your points on. And if you want to see what the conversation choice would have been, save it spend your point do the conversation choice if it doesn't lead to anything in particular well then you can go back to the save point and at least you got to see it tap tab when you enter a room basically tap your kiroshi optics whatever that is on the consoles it's tab on pc 
it'll highlight your enemies, it'll highlight hackable things, lootable things. Basically, it puts loot glint on everything. And this is a game where you want to loot everything, you want to read everything, you know, all the uh, uh, all the shards will show up. And at least in your range, I kind of get a bit obsessive about it. But, you know, if you just want to tap it a couple of times when you're looking around, it really helps show you where things are without you having to get close enough in range for them to pop up. Don't ignore street cred. Street cred is very useful because it opens up things to you. It opens up certain gigs. It will open up purchasable items like weapons, clothing and modifications. So you need to bring that street cred up. And the fact that it opens up a few quests to you as well is really an important reason to do it. Um, how to do it? Just do the scanner hustles. So assaults in progress and all that kind of thing. Just when you see them, go and get stuck in. They're a lot of fun as well. And you raise up your street cred in no time. If you just do the story quests and you go through that way, your street cred is going to be very low later on in the game. And you're going to find you're not going to be able to get the things you need to level up your character. So don't ignore your street cred. One perk I would hugely recommend getting is Pack Mule. There's also a skeleton upgrade you can get, but Pack Mule increases the amount of stuff you can carry. If you want to get the skeleton upgrade, that's also handy too, but that depends on what combat spec you are. That's probably going to be a slot you want to spend on something else. So the Pack Mule perk and stamina boosting meds and you're golden. Keeping this as spoiler free as possible, you will wake up at one point and you will get two gigs very close to each other. Uh, one is through a text message from Delamain. The other one is from a phone call from Takamura. Take Takamura's one first. The job is called playing for time. It's a main job and I would do that first. As soon as you get playing for time, go and do it. The reason is dialogue that follows in other quests will make no sense because of a relationship you have with the character at that point. Now the developers have actually said that they intended you to do playing for time straight away. In which case it should have probably kept you on rails because I know for a fact uh, I didn't want to push on with the main quests straight away. I wanted to find out what was around in the area and some conversations just did not make sense. Um, so if you do playing for time as soon as you get it, the order will pretty much be restored. So uh, before attempting code hacks, the timer doesn't start until you click the first set of letters and the game is essentially paused when you're in the breach window or the hacking window. So just take your time to map your path out first before you do it. It actually doesn't impact your game in any negative way. Taking a few moments there and um, you can get the best outcome from your hack. Now, for those of you uh, who require such a thing, say making videos or, uh, you know, you've got people that might walk in that you don't want to see things, uh, there is a nudity sensor. You can turn it on and off, but you can only do that from the main menu. When you're in game, you can't turn it on and off. As you can see here, when you go into the settings from within the game, it is not there, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You have to quit back to the main menu. When you go into settings, you'll see it's there. And then when you start your game again, the nudity sensor is in place. Oh, this is a really cool one. You can use the holograms as a flashbang. Holy you shit. can shoot them and you can hack them and they will explode. You can use initiate overload to hack them and they are an all powerful flashbang. It's just a bit of fun. Um, you might not have noticed you could do it. Kind of good to know. Don't be worried about spending your perks on things. Not just because you can respec your perks, but you get loads and loads of perks. It's not like you get one perk per every level. Uh, you get perks for leveling up your different skills. If you have a look here along the bottom of the blades tree, for example, when you're leveling up your blades, you get perks for that. You can also get perk shards, which I'll talk more about in a minute, and skill shards and stuff. So yeah, it's definitely worthwhile just going ahead and spending your perks and not worrying too much about it because you will get loads of perks. I think I get over a hundred in my playthroughs. You may be focusing on a blades build or an annihilation build or quick hacking or whatever, but you will have attribute points in other areas and you can gain benefits from leveling up those areas too. For example, if you are on a sword build and let's say you're spending some of your attributes on the strength side of things, well, you can also go around getting shotgun and machine gun kills and level up those individual sub skills and those will give you extra perks and bonuses. So even though you're focusing on one thing, it's worthwhile spreading your kills around basically. Now the one negative impact of that, it will take away from leveling your primary uh, weapon of choice. If you can see here, I'm, I'm still not hitting 20, uh, the level I'm at on my blades, on this blades playthrough, but it's my blades is still 
overpowered and deadly so i don't really need it so yeah it's, it's good to play with the different ones and, and level up all the different things and you can make sure they're maxed out to whatever they can be maxed out to depending on your attribute score okay so don't be afraid of trying the very hard level something i found playing it is that early on you are very fragile very squishy and you can get taken out pretty easily and even later on in the game unless you're investing a lot in tech and having really good armor you can still be pretty squishy and you can be taken out one or two shots from certain enemies so it requires you be a lot more tactical at times but it's actually a lot more fun and as your weapons and your skills all level up you'll find that you're being just as devastating to the enemy so it's pretty cool the challenge is good the first time around i didn't play on very hard and i still found it difficult this time i'm actually starting to find it very easy on very hard as you can see here one thing that i wasn't sure about when i first started playing and I actually had to look into because it's not immediately clear is what's the best route to follow uh, within the city with regards to your level and story progression what flows best well the key is if you primarily follow the main story that'll lead you around to the areas you kind of need to be for the most part anyway that doesn't always hold true but it kind of initially it takes you in the right direction and after that it gets a little bit more sprawling and gives you some options but initially you're going to want to kind of do Watson then go on to Westbrook and then after that, you'll find that the quests take you towards Pacifica, Santa Domingo and the Badlands. And then after that, you're kind of centering in on the main city area. Uh, so you're doing Haywood and the city center. They would be where you find the best Ripper Docks and all that as well. And the highest level enemies. So it's definitely kind of the flow. So Watson, Westbrook, Pacifica, Santa Domingo and the Badlands, I kind of do interchangeably. Then Haywood and the city center. Again, I kind of do those interchangeably as well. Um, a lot of my videos are focused on crafting um, and how to make money with that, but there's one tab next to crafting that I make sure not to miss, and that's the upgrades tab. Take the black unicorn, for example. This is how it starts out. You can level up this, and you can keep leveling up throughout the game, and it's amazing. It's not necessarily my favorite, but it definitely is very good. Um, let's say you find that piece of clothing you like, and you like the style of it, and you want to keep leveling up. You can do that. Now, it's not very efficient to keep leveling something up. You can craft a new version of it later on when you've got more advanced, and then you can keep up upgrading that one rather than spending all your crafting components as this thing gets higher level. As the game goes further on, you'll start finding your loot and things that are better than the thing you're upgrading. But early on, definitely upgrading things is a good way to go. And there's certain weapons like the Black Unicorn that are absolutely worth continually investing your crafting materials into upgrades. So uh, yeah, don't ignore upgrades. It's definitely worth while doing okay i think it's very important to slow down in the city and actually listen there's quite a few times take brendan for example or uh, the quest with arthur and barry near the start where you'll actually hear the npcs talking before you get the quest and coach as well when coach calls you over there's plenty of times where people will be talking or discussing things and if you stop and have a listen you get the context on the quest now there are some missions where you can just blaze on by you don't have to listen and you'll get the text message about the quest and you'll just get this text pop up it's a bit disjointed really you don't know where it's come from and you haven't got the context you get the idea but it's not as fulfilling and there are some quests which i don't think progress if you don't invest the time listening uh the prophet for example you actually have to stop and interact with him otherwise that won't proceed i'm pretty sure you can't proceed brendan you'll know who i mean if you watch my other videos if you don't stop and listen and pay attention to him the first time at least that's how it used to be so it is worthwhile if you hear people talking just stop for a second sometimes it will just be somebody having a conversation on the phone but other times it will be uh something else perk and skill skill shards watch out for these i notice these mostly in ncpd scanner hustles i kind of notice them more from badlands onwards uh but they might be some earlier than that a perk shard is a shard that just gives you one perk that you can spend on any perk you want and skill shard will give you a shard in a specific skill and they drop off of the boss mob in a group of uh, bad guys so um when you're looking at them it's very easy just to spam the loot key and loot everything but be careful when you're looting them you might see a skill shard for pistols for example but you've currently got your pistols maxed out for the moment so when you pick up that skill shard they'll be wasted because you can't actually level the pistols any higher so it's worthwhile not picking that up until you're ready to actually get a benefit out of that Revisit areas, not just because the Gangoons will respawn and you can get some more XP off them, but you'll find that things update. Take this Regina Jones gig, Woman of La Mancha. If you come back to this area later on in the game, you'll find one of the cops who hired the Merc uh, dead with a conversation there. So she took her revenge on the people that took out the hit or the mission that you did on her. So there's these little touches that are so easily missed. So exploring is your friend. 
Max level is 50 and so is your street cred. Each time you level up, you will get one attribute point. So including the ones you get at the start of the game, you have about 72 attribute points to distribute. So have a look and decide what you want to spend them on before you go ahead. Um, if you want to get the best perks in a tree, you need to have the maximum attribute points because the top skills in a tree require 20 in that attribute. When leveling up skills within an attribute, for example, blades within the reflex attribute, you can only level as high as the attribute score. So if you say have 17 in reflexes, you can only actually bring blades up to 17. Any blade kills you get or any XP shards you get will not count towards level 18. You need to level that up first. Don't just play the main quests and ignore side quests, or as they're called in this, jobs. The side jobs are fantastic, or even the gigs, which are kind of like a lesser level job, are great. And even the NCPD hustles, which are the most kind of filler content, the world event type content, they still have story and they still have connection. You'll have people in gigs that are referred to in the shards you'll find in NCPD hustles. Um, you know, they're not isolated from each other. They're all connected and they're all intertwined. And it's actually really well written and really well woven. For example, there's a gig from Regina Jones in Watson Kabuki called Monster Hunt. Do this before you do the quest Automatic Love. It gives you an extra line of conversation that you wouldn't otherwise have. If it's been a while since you did Monster Hunt and you forgot about it, you might not know the link. I remember the first time I played it when I actually got the line pop up. You know, it was a kind of an intimidation line, but I had no idea who I was referring to because it had been so long since I did it. So pay attention to the gigs, who the people are in it, and, uh, and it will make sense. So do Monster Hunt before you do Automatic Love. And maybe do them close together as well. I would say, and this kind of comes in contrary to my other point about not ignoring gigs and NCPD hustles, don't do all of the NCPD hustles before moving on with the main storyline because you're going to over level for the main storyline. So kind of do enough until you kind of feel like moving on. Don't be compulsive. What I tend to do is I will come back after the game when I'm either on the very final mission or when I've come back after doing the end game and I will work on NCPD hustles for fun and experimentation and things like that. You don't need to do them all. Gigs, I would almost do all the gigs, yeah, but NCPD hustles, no. I wouldn't try and do all the NCPD hustles. You will be over leveled for the main quest and you'll just feel like you're kind of just going through it with no threat. I wonder, did you know this? Do you know you can access your stash from the trunk of all your vehicles, even your bike? I know it doesn't make sense that you can store a gazillion weapons in the back of a motorbike, but hey, you can. So yeah, just go around to the back of it and you'll see an option to either open the boot or trunk if you're in America or open your stash. One is just the animation of opening the vehicles trunk and one of them is uh, accessing your stash. You might not have known this, but uh, cameras can be manually turned off. Uh, you know you can turn them off if you go into the computer and you go into local network and you can disable the cameras. You can actually go up and stand underneath them if you have a high enough tech score and turn them off manually. Or you can just shoot them as well, of course, but that'll alert the enemies. Don't loot mid-combat. And here's why. If you start looting while you're fighting and you get encumbered, by having too much in your inventory, you suddenly start moving very slowly and you become a very easy to hit target. So you don't do that. Now, I guess this is gonna be my final tip for new players ever. If you're using something to slow time and you're going into a fight, don't use a stealth takedown while it's active. Um, so, you know, going up behind them and doing a takedown, either non-lethal or lethal, it doesn't matter. It'll pop you out straight away. And you know, so don't do that. Okay, there you go, so that's all my tips. I can't really think of anything else, and um, yeah, this would be enough for you to get on with. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Take care, folks. Bye.